That's gorgeous. Welcome back, I'm Tedward. Welcome to Western New England where it's a beautiful fall day and a great day for leaf peeping because New England is starting to get nice and bright in the mountains and hills and we have the perfect vehicle for the job on this little cheeky weekend drive. This is a 2014 Rolls-Royce Ghost Alpine Trial Centenary Edition which is commemorating 100 years since the Alpine Trial that put Rolls-Royce on the map for its reliability. More about that later. This is powered by a 6.6 liter twin turbo V12 making 563 horsepower and it is quite a beast despite the fact that it wafts you along in unparalleled luxury except for the fact that there is a better car the Phantom the Ghost basically came out to be the the more affordable I guess every man's four door Rolls Royce the Phantom next to this makes this look kind of puny which is bizarre because this still feels like a very large outrageous car but as long as you're not pulling up at a light next to a Phantom, your ghost will always be the most impressive thing on the road. Now, the Alpine Trial has a few special options, including this paint color. This Robin's Egg Blue is a $41,000 option. So eat your heart out, Porsche PTS, because this is how you prove that you really wanted a color. There's all kinds of fun little bits on this because there's even this coach line that comes all the way down the side of the vehicle. And then there's four little slashes down here to indicate that there were four Rolls Royces on the trial in 1913. It went through four countries, I believe Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, and back to Italy, and it was 1,800 miles. So back in the 19, early 1900s, you have to imagine how grueling it would be to put a car through its paces, sometimes with 28 degree grades. So no small feat, and I think that's why we can appreciate this one here today. Let me show you around. First, let's just get under the hood. You'll notice the brushed aluminum hood here. And then we have our Spirit of Ecstasy, which will go down and up depending on if the car is locked or not. And under here, we've got our BMW V12, because yes, this is based on the 7 Series, the F01 platform, which is not anything to scoff at. I know a lot of people like to look at these cars and say, oh, it's just the BMW. And while it does share about 20% of its parts with the 7 Series, it certainly has a character and feel all its own. I love this V12. It hides perfectly behind the chic nature of the power delivery. So yes, you do hear it, but it just kind of erupts under throttle with a really subtle vibration that lets you know that something is moving this at an alarming speed. It's like being on a yacht and it really does feel like that. We've got to demonstrate this. Yeah, no one's stealing the emblem from your roller. We love to see it. And essentially, this is a four-door Wraith, which is not a bad thing. We have coach doors in the rear, which we love, often called suicide doors, but that would be kind of gauche to talk about in such a way with a Rolls-Royce. Because we're out for the weekend and we're just cruising around, that's why I've got a lot of stuff in here and in the trunk. But the rear seats are pretty well appointed. They even have massage seats in the rear as well as the front. And it has the entertainment package. So you've got TV screens back here, which I am just tempted to plug in a Super Nintendo. But of course, I can't be bothered to reach for my own door. So we'll hit this button, close that up. And now we have two screens and basically an iDrive setup back here. Let me just see what this is. There's a little bit of storage here as well and lots of seat controls, including rear massage seats controlled right down here. Show us how this works, Dana, because this is old school, early, like 2000 teens. For sure. Well, it's pretty much the same iDrive as the front. You got your radio, there's some headphone jacks down there. Um, some multimedia. I'm assuming there's a DVD player hiding somewhere back here, um, as well as a map, etc. And one of the interesting things is you can actually get the whole vehicle manual um, from the rear. From the rear. So while you're freaking out that something's gone awry on your dashboard, your kids can be telling you what's going on. <laughs> wow. Search by pictures? <laughs> Seriously? Another thing that's really great about these cars is that they have tray tables. So if you are just on like a long road trip, or something, you've got the ability to, uh, to to set up shop with your laptop or whatever. And let's see, we can adjust these rear seats. This is where this starts to become 
really impressive as a rear passenger because they are so comfortable. And despite the fact that it is smaller than a Phantom, this is still an exorbitant amount of room for any average person. Let's go into the rear. Actually, before we go into the rear, let me show you something else. Of course, soft closed doors, but you'll never be without your umbrella in the roller because this pops right out of the front door. Now, you've seen this before, and typically you've seen it in the Phantom and the Wraith where it would be in that door. So the difference between this Ghost and the Phantom is that it tucks away in the front door, not the rear door. In the boot, we can start talking money while we look at all of our stuff bunched up in here. Pretty disorganized, my apologies, but we needed to protect this framed window sticker of this 2014 Ghost. And this one had a total MSRP, the suggested retail price of $383,750. Boy, oh boy, is depreciation a beautiful thing because while my friend Chris at the Depreciation Society certainly has plenty of cash to throw down for a vast collection of these cars, he has only paid a fraction of that original price. And just so you're not questioning me, Alpine Rally open color, $41,500. Absolutely staggering just to get this beautiful color. Gluing us to the road on these beautiful 20 inch wheels, which you honestly wouldn't notice because they don't look that large in relation to the rest of the car, is a 255 section tire all around, front and rear. And as you'll of course notice, the Rolls-Royce center cap always faces down. It is weighted, so as you drive, that just sits in that position. You'll never, ever, ever turn that upside down. So, enough about that. Let's go enjoy some lovely New England roads in the Ghost. To start the Ghost, foot on brake, start stop button here. Revealing our iDrive infotainment system, which you can love or hate. I am very familiar with these just because I had an E92 BMW for years, and there's even a little button right here if you don't want to see the display. Now, in old BMWs, you would have to go through option and turn the screen off. You can do that here as well, but the way it works here is just very simple with that extra little button. Our transmission settings, we can get into drive with our stock there, push forward to release our parking brake, and we can be setting off in a moment with our very simple but elegant display. We've got power reserve percentage instead of a tachometer, so that's telling you right now we're at idle. We've got about 100% left. Ooh, people are enjoying the roads today, but as we set off, you'll notice that power reserve decrease because we're getting on throttle. So let's go for it and chase down a motorcycle and a ghost. Now it's not a track star, but it's composed and good enough. It doesn't encourage you to do bad things, but the first thing you notice about this driving experience, other than its supple, delicious suspension, is this thin rimmed steering wheel, which is kind of a mark of Rolls Royce luxury, which is kind of ironic because being a BMW, BMW went all in on big, chunky wheels because they believed the chunkier, the sportier. And they've done a pretty good job in their sort of trickery marketing over the years because they put power buttons in the center console to basically just tune up a throttle map and it doesn't add any power, but people will literally think that an E92 M3 makes more power when you hit the power button, which is unfortunate. They'll also say that in more modern cars with ultra numb electric assist steering that the steering feel gets better when you put it in the sport mode. It in fact does not. It simply gets heavier. It does not increase tactility. But in this, it's kind of intentionally numb. But it's light. This is not, there's a lot of minis, a lot of Volkswagens out here today. There must have been some sort of meat out west. What I love about this car is that all of the controls are dialed in like an elegant sort of fashion. Even if you're a little ham-fisted, you'll probably still seem like a limo driver, which is not easy in every car. But the trick to tuning and dialing a car to feel like that is to then not make it so numb that it's hard to drive. 
because if the brakes are vague and weird and not touchy enough, then it feels like you're out of control. And if the steering doesn't have enough tactility, then you're not really sure what's going on the road. You've got to strike this balance when you have these luxury cars because you don't want to completely disappear the road. This Ghost does a pretty darn good job being that it's based off a of 7 Series. perfect day for this oh my goodness it's funny because a lot of the roads that we had to take to get out here were very trafficy and boring and yet I wasn't bored because if I were in my 911 right now I'd be so mad that I have an Avalon hanging ass in front of me with a weekend full of things and I don't get to go fast but in this I kind of feel like well I'm fine going 38 miles per hour because nothing nothing matters it's just the car is what matters. It's not necessarily the G-forces surrounding it. It's so quiet. It's so insulated. It's an incredibly windy day out here. We're kind of on the side of the mountain right now where there isn't any wind, but even on the highway with, with strong crosswinds, this is not a stressful thing. What do you think, Dana? What are your favorite pieces of this car so far now that you've been in it for an hour or two? So favorite pieces are probably comfort and quietness with like the sneaky torque because the car rides like a dream and then once you get into it you don't really feel how fast you're going but the car absolutely pulls you up to speed um, yeah. pleasant surprise for sure i've never had like a driver ride along experience like that it is very bizarre because you'll get on throttle and it doesn't even necessarily downshift it just like holds a tall gear and pulls like a freight train that was like the first thing i noticed was how long the gears were like you get into it and it just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling and there's no shifting it's just all go at that <laughs> it's like 60% throttle Wild. oh yes yeah the ghost the ghost is good people people love to complain that like oh it's just an expensive BMW and, and to, to an extent yeah of course it is I mean I think it shares 20% of its parts with the 7 series however the rolls royceification is worth something. Now, it's up to you whether that's worth an extra, like, I don't know, $200,000 or more than that, really, like two fifty. dollars And objectively, no, you don't need that. But that, that's what the Rolls Royce is all about. You don't need it, but you can. And that's it. It's just to show that you can. And even something as simple as this paint color, it's $41,000 to get this paint color. That is remarkably expensive and obviously inappropriate. Like, obviously, you don't need to do that. You, you get a, a Porsche with PTS or CXX options, and it will cost you a sizable chunk less than what they charge for this in 2014. So it is a little bit of just the number. The, the size of the number is almost the point. The size of the cost of the option is like part of the option. It's part of the flex. What is this? Is that a plow? Yeah. Giant plow. That is a cool plow. Mm -hmm. Big old V plow to show like, hey, we're not messing around up here in the town of Florida, Massachusetts. Everybody looks. If you look at the eyes of oncoming traffic, you're like hoping that they're paying enough attention to the road not to drive into you. But every single person gets a look at this car. And I don't think that's the case so much with the Bentley Azure and the Rolls-Royce Phantom in the Depreciation Society collection because those are darker colors. The Azure is like a black color and the Phantom is a very deep sort of metallic blue. But this being this Robin's Egg color, it pops like a Lamborghini. It pops like a supercar. So everybody takes a peek. Now there are some like minor vibrations in the car. It's not completely devoid of feeling of the road and of its driveline. I have a hunch though, because I've driven a lot of now depreciated older hyper luxury boats, these barges, these Luxo barges. And 
yes, they have insanely supple suspensions and wild sidewall on wheels that you can't believe you can still fit tires with sidewall on. But the drive lines, I think there's so much damping in these cars. There's so many like rubber bushings and things to smooth them out that I think over time they do start to wear a little bit and they get a little bit out of sync, a little bit out of round or a little bit worn. And then just steady state cruising, you will start to feel some vibrations in these seats. And this is a car with only like 8,000 miles in it. It's not that bad, but if you did a Maybach 57 with 60, 70,000 miles, you will start to feel that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Sounds great too. Yeah, there's definitely a car meet somewhere. And I have a hunch that you would need to replace like drive shafts and dampers galore and all of these Rolls, Bentleys, and Maybachs to get them to tr properly drive perfectly. But there is a level where you do just need to have a little bit of acceptance for the state that they're in because they're still in in very good nick you just need to accept that like hey unless i'm going to go put another hundred thousand dollars into something maybe i'll just let it be as it is oh my goodness this is a little bit catastrophic wow wow gorgeous blue vista motor lodge all right I have to remember this for someday it just feels weird staying in massachusetts <laughs> yeah like we live in massachusetts so we would take a road trip out to Vermont or New Hampshire or New York, but like it feels weird to be like we're on holiday in Massachusetts. It feels like otherworldly compared to the 495 circle, though. <laughs> I know, and we were just talking about how all these people that live out in these little towns, like, what do they do? What is the industry out here? And all of your answers were support. You were like teachers, firefighters, policemen, post office. Like, yeah, but those are the support for like a town full of people. Right. So like, what do the people do? And I, I genuinely have no idea. And I get it when you live in like a touristy area and like maybe tourism is a thing, but there's not enough tourism out here to really support that. And I don't know that these are necessarily like super duper wealthy towns where they're just folks of like old money that don't work and just like like it here. So I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what people do. Ooh, big old turkey chasing chickens. You just see the strangest things. Okay, that is a great example of an old Volvo, a 740 Turbo, I think, that red. Is it Turbo? No, 940, sorry. Yeah. Those are my favorite wheels. I think they're called the Hydras. Those look good. Oh, yeah. It's been a while. Those used to just litter my neighborhood, and now how not so feel, much. How does it feel to live my dream? <laughs> Oh man, I like forgot what we're driving. So we just had like a really nice little dinner and now we're heading back home and it's perfect because this is kind of how I wanted to time it. I wanted to have the sun setting so that way it would illuminate the trees a little better when we get to the, the hairpin, which if you're from Massachusetts and I say the word the hairpin, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But out here on Route 2 or the Mohawk Trail, there's a very specific location that has a hairpin turn with a little restaurant on it and a gorgeous, gorgeous view. And everyone just refers to it as the hairpin. Unfortunately, because it's kind of like a, a, a car guy tourist destination, it's not really available for like the drifter's dream or the grip car dream of just like ripping up and hitting it. There's always people, there's always cars. It's a little dangerous to kind of mess with. So you've got to be kind of cautious, but we're ab about to climb the hill and find it. And the last time I did this was in the Corvette Z06, the C8. And of course, that was like a great car for it. But now we're in literally the complete opposite type of vehicle. It is not hard-edged or hardcore whatsoever. It is just supple and sweet. Yeah, look, I don't know if you can see this on the map. It might be flickering for you, but oh man, we're getting a clear run at the hairpin. Are you kidding? This doesn't happen. All right, maybe we'll maybe we'll put the the ghost through its paces a little <laughs> bit. Gotta be a little cautious around here because there's still some homes and things. All right, the goal is to keep enough heat. So that way this guy doesn't pull out. All right, we're good, we're good, we're good. He's going the other way anyway, but... Oh, man. 
it'd be pretty darn cool to hit the hairpin hard in the roller. <laughs> what kind of tires do we have on this? Good years, I think, which is kind of funny. The torque is so effortless. That's my favorite sign, by the way. Car doesn't feel like it would be any faster than my Volvo, but I know damn well this <laughs> would so, like absolutely walk away from it. I mean, we we're gonna have to actually just chill for a second because there's cars up there that I'm gonna catch up to in like 10 seconds because normal people drive 25 miles an hour. <laughs> God, I love these gauges. They make me so happy. Everything about this car, honestly, is really good. And, and I know that this era of Rolls-Royce gets a little bit of flack just because it's very BMW. But maybe that flack only comes from people who haven't driven them? Uh, I don't want to be like a, like a jerk about it, but I mean, this is really good. And relatively fuel efficient. We've been getting like 21 miles per gallon in this thing. Oh, look at this. Look at this beautiful down a gear. This eight speed. It's weird that it's an eight speed because it really feels like it's a four speed. The way it delivers power is just so, look at this. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. We cannot hit this hard. I'm sorry. We just can't do it because there's so many people here. It would be so irresponsible. And in this car, it would be such a statement to be driving like a lunatic. But people this is- be taking pictures of the car instead of the sunset. We're gonna turn around and come back down because I wanna see if we can park up, up there. I'm gonna go where all those people are, <laughs> <laughs> I think. That's what I would like to do. Um, Big photo off for the car. Yeah, maybe in front of the GR. Let's see. Squeeze it. I, I think I can get in over here. Oh yeah, you got it. There we go. I need to know everything. Who in the what and the where I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche, five and a horse. I'm ready for war. I'm coming. Well, for we got our almost bucket list shot, I suppose, up here. A little bit after sunset, but I think we got enough. This always looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. The sun setting behind these mountains looks fantastic. And I think we've had a proper little adventure in the ghost, which is what these cars are all about. A lot of people use these to flex and they just drive around Los Angeles or major cities where they're just valeting them at a restaurant so that way they're seen arriving. What I like about cars like this, big Luxo barges, is actually driving them on some fun roads and taking them to places where they seemingly don't belong. So. This has been a great little time, and let's take a look at our fuel consumption since we were driving. 19.1 miles per gallon with quite a few little pulls here and there. Not bad, so this is not the fuel consumer that the Azure is with that four and three quarter, or sorry, six and three quarter liter <laughs> turbocharged V8. Good on this V12 for being fairly economical. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. We are going to cruise home in the twilight of dusk in a New England autumn evening. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one.